Murphy's Gatos here. Welcome back to 7.2 part two. In this video, we will cover piecewise functions. But before we begin that, let's review what we did last video. So I have two review questions for you. In this first question, you have four statements that you must classify as true or false. So I recommend pausing the video, try it out yourself, and then come back and see how you did. So in statement number one, if the y-intercept of a function is negative 8, then the y-intercept of the absolute value of the function is positive 8. Well, if my original point was at negative 8, when I take the absolute value of that y-value, it does, in fact, become positive 8. So that is true, so we'll record that as a 1. Statement 2. If the x-intercepts of a function are 2 and negative 5, then the x-intercepts of the absolute value function are 2 and negative positive 5. Well, x-intercepts are x values, and remember with an absolute value, your input can be positive or negative. It is the output which becomes positive. x-intercepts have an output of 0, which does not change. So the x-intercepts of a function and its absolute value function stay the same. So this is false, and I'll record a 2. Statement 3. If 4, 9 lies on the graph of the absolute value function, then 4, negative 9 must lie on the graph of y equals f of x. Well, this appears to make sense because 4, negative 9, if I take the absolute value of negative 9, it becomes positive 9. So it looks like that's a reasonable statement. However, that's not the only possibility. I could have the point for positive 9 on the graph, and when I take the absolute value of positive 9, it too is positive 9. So there are actually two possible points that could be on the graph of f of x. So since it says it must lie on there, I am going to say this is false and record a 2. If the range of y equals f of x is y greater than or equal to 5, then the range of the absolute value is y is an element of the reals. So let's look at this. If I have a function and a quadratic comes to mind, it would have to open up and have a low point at 5. So if I take the absolute value of any y value on there, it's already positive, so it will stay positive. So that means that all the points on this graph are invariant points. In other words, when I take the absolute value, they will stay the same. To say that y is an element of the reals means that y can be any number, positive, negative, 0, 4, etc. And you can see on that graph that is not true. Since the original graph is greater than or equal to 5, the absolute value will also be greater than or equal to 5. So the points in this case here will not change. Every point is going to stay the same. So this is false, and I will record a 2. So my final answer here, 1, 2, 2, 2. Okay, let's try this one here. So again, I want you guys to read this question, pause the video, and try this one on your own. Come back and see the answer. So in this question here, it says the graph of y equals g of x passes through a point negative 3 and negative 6. Then the graph of the absolute value passes through the point a and b. So let's think here. If I have a point negative 3 and negative 6, so approximately there, negative 3, negative 6, it is below the x-axis. So because it's all about the y value, I take the absolute value of negative 6 and it becomes positive 6. So this point is reflected in the x-axis to become 3 and positive 6. So remember with absolute values, your x value stays the same. It is your y value that changes. So your value of a is negative 3 because x stays the same. And the value of b is 6, or you could record it as positive 6, because the absolute value of negative 6 is positive 6. So let's jump into piecewise functions. We did really talk about that in the last video when we talked about the positive piece and the negative piece. We're going to formally put that together in an equation, and what we're really doing is getting ready for the next section, which is solving absolute value equations. So piecewise function is the most important part of that process, so we're going to dedicate a video just to that. So we know that functions are made up of two or more pieces. In the case of absolute value, they're made up of a positive piece 
and a negative piece. Now, each piece has its own domain. That's what I was saying. To the left of this number, it's negative. To the right of this number, it's positive. That's the domain. Now, f of x equals the absolute value of x is a piecewise function. The reason it is is because the absolute value of x equals x and the absolute value of negative x also equals x. So what we need to do is examine the input. I want to know what causes that to be a positive x and what causes that to be a negative x because the end result is just positive. So what I'm doing is I'm backing the bus up and looking at what the function was before I took the absolute value. So we're looking at the two pieces, the positive piece and the negative piece. So let's look at just our very base function, the absolute value of x, and write it as a piecewise function. So because it is the absolute value of x, I look at the function inside the absolute value, which is just f of x equals x. So it's just a nice linear graph. Let's examine the positive and negative piece. So the positive piece right here, this is the positive piece, and that happens when x is to the right of 0, so greater than or equal to zero. The negative piece right here happens to the left of zero when x is less than zero. So I want to put that together and write it as a piecewise function. So what I can do is look at the absolute value of x and write it as a piecewise function here. So this is the absolute value of x. So look here where I have my positive piece. So all the points greater than or equal to zero are positive above the x-axis. And remember, the absolute value of a positive stays positive. So to write absolute value of x as a piecewise function, here is my positive piece. So this is my positive piece. The function is just x. And that happens when x is greater than or equal to zero. Let's look at my negative piece. So my negative piece is all the points less than zero. All of those y values are negative, And the absolute value of a negative is a positive. So they get reflected in the x-axis. So here is my negative piece. Now, what I really did is I said if this is positive x, I flip the sign and say originally this is negative x. If you look at this part of the function here, it gets reflected over here to become this. This is a negative slope. So this piece here is negative x. This piece here is positive x. Those two pieces come together to form the absolute value. So what I've done is I've identified my x-intercept. I've identified where it is positive and negative. So here is the positive piece. That's the subdomain for the positive. Here is the negative piece and the function. So the original function is x. The reflected function, after it gets reflected, becomes negative x. So let's try an example. I want to write the absolute value of 2x minus 5 as a piecewise function. So first thing I do is I look at the graph of just what's in the inside of the absolute value, 2x minus 5. So I do that, I found the x-intercept is 2.5. So now I identify my positive and negative piece. So my positive piece right here happens any time x is greater than or equal to 2.5. So what I mean by that is when x is greater than 2.5, the function is positive and the absolute value of a positive is a positive, so that stays the same. So here's the first part of my piecewise function. 2x minus 5 when x is greater than or equal to 2.5. Now let's examine my negative piece. So my negative piece where it's below the x-axis is to the left of 2.5 when x is less than 2.5. So in that case, the function is negative and the absolute value of a negative is a positive, so it's reflected in the x-axis. To show that, I need to reflect each part. So 2x would become negative 2x, negative 5 would become positive 5. And those would be your two pieces. So when that graph gets reflected, the graph kind of goes like this. This equation here would be negative 2x plus 5. It's a negative sloping line with a y-intercept of 1. So that's why we reflect each piece. Okay. 
I want you guys to pause the video and try this one on your own and then come back to compare answers. So for this one, I want to write the absolute value of 3x plus 5. So I start with the graph of 3x plus 5 itself. I do that to get a picture of it. I find the x-intercept so I can see the positive and the negative piece. So let's examine the positive piece. So the positive piece right there above the x-axis is anything where x is greater than or equal to negative 5 thirds. So that stays as 3x plus 5. It's a positive slope y-intercept of 5. Let's look at the negative piece. So the negative piece is reflected. 3x becomes negative 3x. Positive 5 becomes negative 5. That's the negative piece when it is less than 5 thirds. So when I do my absolute value, it's going to be reflected, so something like this. So you can see it's a negative sloping line, and if I were to continue that line, it would have a y-intercept of negative 5. So the domain, the domain of any absolute value is x is an element of the reals. The range, I always look at the graph and I can see that it is y greater than or equal to zero. Okay, let's try a quadratic. So in this quadratic here, I'm going to look at the absolute value of negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. So I start with the graph on the inside. So look at the graph on the inside. I see it's a downward facing parabola with x-intercepts of negative 1 and positive 3. So just like linear, I identify my positive and negative pieces. So my positive piece is there in between negative 1 and 3. So what that means is between negative 1 and 3, all my y values are positive. Since the absolute value of a positive is a positive, my graph stays the same. So I can replace the absolute value with this positive piece when x is in between negative 1 and 3. Let's look at the negative piece. So the negative piece is when it's below the x-axis. That happens to the right of 3 and to the left of negative 1. So when x is less than negative 1 or greater than 3, the function's negative, and the absolute value of a negative is a positive, so it will be reflected. So I just reflect each piece. Negative x squared becomes x squared. 2x positive becomes negative. Positive 3 becomes negative 3, and that happens on the outer edges. Something I do want to mention is, notice I put equals in the first case, and I don't have equals in the second case. Now, when x is equal to negative 1, y has a value of 0. Now, truthfully, y equal to 0, 0 is not a positive or a negative number. It's actually called a neutral number. And 0 is actually the separator of positives and negatives, which is why we look at the x-intercepts. So to the right of 0, all my numbers are positive. To the left of 0, all my numbers are negative. So technically, 0 is neither positive nor negative. So that's why we don't have equals for both. Now, you can put the equals in the first case or the second case, but not in both. So common convention, I just put it in the first case so I don't forget about it. Okay, this is the last example. I would get you guys to try the absolute value of this 2x squared plus 7x minus 4. Pause the video, come back, see how you did. So the first thing that I'm going to do is graph what's on the inside, which is 2x squared plus 7x minus 4. I graph it for the purpose of getting the x-intercepts. So let's identify our positive pieces. So since this graph opens up, my positive pieces are on the outside. So 2x squared plus 7x minus 4. That's going to happen when x is less than negative 4 or greater than or equal to a half. My negative piece is below the x-axis. And that piece will be reflected in the x-axis. So 2x squared becomes negative 2x squared. 7x becomes negative 7x, negative 4 becomes positive 4. And that will happen in between negative 4 and a half. I'm just going to adjust this here. Let's write this as x greater than negative a half, but less, or sorry, x is greater than negative 4, but less than a half. So just switch those two around. So again, to do a piecewise function, we are taking this absolute value and splitting it into its positive and negative piece. This idea is really important to solving. So more practice for this, the better. 
Oh, f of x, you're so positive in everything you say or do, f of x says. Absolutely. So let's all aim to be more like f of x. I want you guys to do practice questions four and five. Super important that you guys are comfortable with piecewise functions before we move on to solving equations. So I hope this video helped and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.